what's up, RNA? As I am here with another video, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And if you don't subscribe, maybe you're just stupid, okay? Oh my gosh, you're not stupid. I'm just kidding. It's a joke. <laughs> but y'all really are stupid if you don't subscribe. <laughs> Go ahead and subscribe now. Thank you, subscribers. You can bully them. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Anyways, how the universe is way bigger than you think, you know? After this video, I'm just going to stop talking. Okay? Because I'm not here to be a Noah doll. Okay? We're just going to watch this. It's a real life explorer video made possible by Squarespace. Make your next move with a beautiful website from Squarespace. This is Earth. You live here on this planet somewhere, and everything that you've ever known is located right here. But just how small exactly is Earth when compared to the scale of the entire universe? Let's start by zooming out to where we can see our nearest cosmic neighbor, the moon. You may think that the moon is very close to Earth since it dominates our night skies, but in reality the moon isn't this close to our planet, it's actually about this far away, 384,400 kilometers away from you right now on average. You could fit 30 entire Earths in between this distance, and if you somehow were able to drive a car at a constant 100 kilometers per hour speed, it would take you about 160 days to drive the entire distance. Despite this incredible distance, however, 12 humans have actually set foot here, representing the furthest away that any individual human has ever been away from the Earth, and one of humanity's greatest achievements. This is what the Earth would look like from there if you were standing there with them, and if you wanted to communicate with somebody back at home, it would take a message about two and a half seconds to travel between you and them, since that's how fast the speed of light can travel at. This is a photo that was taken on Mars, and that tiny dot that you see there is Earth as seen from the Martian surface. On average, Mars is an incredible 225 million kilometers away from Earth, but that distance can be as high as 401 million kilometers. That means that whenever humanity finally gets around to landing a human on the planet, that person will be 986 times further away from Earth than the astronauts who landed on the moon were. In addition... Oh, well, could that factor in the relativity thing? Where time stretches? Like that one movie we watched, Emerson? Uh, I think, I think with it is, we have to be in, in a whole nother, um galaxy for time to change like that. Because you have to remember... Uh, that one dude that stayed in the sh that stayed in the ship, he was on the other no, side. No, they didn't leave the galaxy. They just went to a different solar system, right? Isn't that where they went? I thought they just went to a different solar system. No, I think it was completely like a another galaxy. Oh, that's right. It was. They yeah. went through a wormhole. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because yeah, yeah. I mean, it's different because like I think somebody was saying something about how how uh gravity speed of light and time they kind of like work together yeah but if you were to go to a whole another universe oh, that the would same, completely the, change all oh, the same uh, rules of our galaxy do not apply in another galaxy yeah. so our time is vastly different in another galaxy yeah because when yeah. they went to another galaxy two, two hours was 40 years that's tough yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah Delay for sending a message from Mars back to Earth isn't just two and a half seconds, it's actually more like 20 minutes each direction, which would render instant communication in the event of an emergency impossible. When we zoom out even further away, we can find the Voyager 1 space probe, which is the furthest away man-made object from Earth. It is currently located 138 AUs from the Earth, AU meaning astronomical unit, which is the distance That's between awesome. Earth and the Sun which means that Voyager 1 is 138 times further away from us than the sun is. At some point on its long voyage, Voyager 1 turned its camera around and took this photograph. It may not look like much at first, but in my opinion, this is the greatest single photograph ever taken in all of human history. This tiny, pale blue dot is Earth, and I don't think that anybody has ever said something as amazing about this as Carl Sagan when he said, If you look at it, you see a dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever lived, lived out their lives. The aggregate of all our joys and sufferings. Thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines. Every hunter and every forager. Every hero and coward. 
every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and every peasant, every young couple in love, every hopeful child, every mother and every father, every inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on a moat of dust suspended in a sunbeam. That's Voyager 1 is currently traveling. Are you serious? That's how small we are comp Yeah. At 17 kilometers every box. single Boy, second, that. but even a- It's so funny, there are, like, we're so tiny, but then there's people that want to make their problems big as the universe. <laughs> <laughs> At that speed, it won't break out of the reach of our solar system for another 30,000 years. Once we go beyond the solar system, we arrive in our interstellar neighborhood. Here we shift to the light year unit of measurement, which is the distance that light travels in a full Earth year, or about 9.461 trillion kilometers. The star Proxima Centauri here is the closest other star to us other than our sun, but it's still 4.24 light years away from us. To put that into perspective, if it was heading in the right direction, it would still take Voyager 1 over 70,000 years to reach it. In other words, if you drove your car at 100 kilometers an hour like in our previous example to the moon, it would take over six times longer than the entire age of the universe is just to finally get there, and it wouldn't even- Hold on just a sec. <laughs> Man. That's actually pretty interesting to just- Thinking of how everything is so small compared to what's really out there. Interesting. Ha! Huh. I got another robocall. Have you guys gotten those robocalls where they like call and say, he, we have this warranty on your vehicle, and I'm like, this number does not have nothing to do, like, this is that number for this specific state, when I know I got the warranty in another state, so y'all trying to get information out of me, like, these Trying to get some money out these, of you! I know, scamming, y'all just watch out for those robocalls, seriously, watch out for them, because, man, and people been following And even if you for block them, they're calling you from another number. They're literally calling from another number, and it's the most annoying shit ever. Yeah. Ugh. When you arrived, when we zoom out even further, we can see the entire Milky Way galaxy, inside of which Earth is located right here. Like an this eye yellow anyway. dot is the furthest cool. extent of humanity's radio broadcast throughout history, which means that any possible aliens who live outside of this range are totally unaware of humanity's presence. It's complete silence outside of this yellow dot. Wait, what they say? Hold on. And of humanity's radio broadcast throughout, they get there, and it wouldn't even exist still when you arrived. When we zoom out even further, we can see the entire Milky Way galaxy, inside of which Earth is located right here. This yellow dot is the furthest extent of humanity's radio broadcast throughout history, which means that any possible aliens who live outside of this range are totally unaware of humanity's presence. It's complete silence outside of this yellow dot as far as we are currently aware, but the entire galaxy though. spans over 100,000 light years from end to end. There are over 100 billion stars and over 100 billion planets inside of our galaxy. But you have never seen the full glory of the galaxy at night because- This is crazy because like when you think about it, Interstellar, they went to, in that movie, they went to a whole nother galaxy. So they're yeah. in a whole nother galaxy full of a whole bunch of different planets. In our, like this in our, one planet which has all the waters but no moon and so the- the, the, uh, the tides of the water, the waves, was very off-balance. Why nobody can't live there. Yeah, I mean, it was nice. It was just like Earth, but the water, the tides, were too dangerous to live there. Like, you couldn't build anything or anything. At least with our technology. Yeah. 99% of the stars that you can see with the naked eye are limited to this small, tiny region right here. 
But even this massive galaxy is nothing compared to the rest of what's out there. Zooming out even further and we arrive at the local group of galaxies, a collection of 54 different galaxies that is about 10 million light years across. But zooming out My even further and we can see the Virgo supercluster, of which the how local group here is just a tiny segment of. How? how do they gather all this information? Well, they have uh, the Hubble telescope and then they have computers that can collect data. They send those voyagers out. But it takes them like 50 to 100 years to scan through the universe and to go through it. And, yeah. Interesting. They just could But what's so crazy is that there's more than this. Well, yeah, it's more than this because our we can only go so far and collect so much data. We haven't even got the technology yet to like go far enough to collect everything. But this is what we have so much, and they call that the observable universe. What we can actually observe. I wonder what other species is, is out there. Yeah. That's really cool. I mean, the thing is, is like we can't even reach them, and right now, as we see it, they can't reach us. Cause don't you think they would have done it by now if they wanted to? Maybe they already did this long yeah. time ago. It could have been. Yeah. A lot of people believe that uh, our DNA isn't fully like they think that we came from monkeys. People do that. Do think we came from monkeys, but they think like an alien race came to Earth and, and maybe. Like Splice DNA or maybe mix the DNA and that ma they allowed some monkeys to be able to evolve. Some apes I mean, evolve. Yeah, I mean, that would explain why not all of the monkeys have evolved. Yeah, and then we uh, some we all still have tail bones, if you notice. You know, we still have the tail bones just not grown out anymore. We still have the things of a mammal, like the skin mm -hmm. and the habits of a mammal, so we're just more intelligent. But like I said, or we could just popped out of nowhere, or God, if you believe, you know, that you follow religion, that could be your answer. But like I said, as far as we know, we really don't know a lot, you know. There are at least 100 other groups of galaxies just like our own local group inside of here, and the distance from one side to the other is a mind-numbing 110 million light years. But even the massive Virgo supercluster is nothing but a quiet and tiny lobe of the great Laniakea supercluster, an enormous structure that is home to our galaxy as well as 100,000 other galaxies. The distance from one side to the other is 520 million light years, but from even there we can zoom out all the way to the entire observable universe and see that even the titanic Laniakea supercluster is just a tiny and insignificant part of everything. This is the observable universe, and it contains everything that we know of. It is home to at least two trillion different and individual galaxies, which together contain more stars than there are grains of sand on the entire Earth. The distance from Earth to any side of the observable universe is 46.5 billion light years, which means that the entire width is 93 billion light years across. What's perhaps even more interesting, however, is what actually lies beyond the observable universe. Keep in mind that the observable universe is all that we can currently see, and it's entirely possible that the rest of the universe outside of it is vastly larger and more fantastic than we can possibly ever imagine. We simply don't know what else is out there, because the light from these incredibly distant places has not yet had enough time in the universe's history to reach us yet back on Earth and the light from some places may never reach us at all. Because some parts of space very far away from Earth are expanding away from us faster than the speed of light, that means that the light from these places will never, in an infinite amount of time, reach Earth. Meaning that even if humanity is eternal and exists forever, there will still be an unknown number of places in the universe that we will never know about or ever see. So, it is very likely that as unbelievably enormous as it seems, the observable universe is just a tiny slice of what we can currently see of the entire universe. According to the theory of cosmic inflation that was proposed by Dr. Alan Goode, uh, what? So what we can actually see as a universe may not even be, may only be even a fraction of what the whole universe actually is. That's how you yeah, know. Yeah, and it's, as, as it says, the universe is rapidly growing faster than the speed of light. So that means that, like, what is out there 
What? Like, how? How is? Where is the universe coming from? Well, yeah, that's what a lot of people. A lot of people say God created the universe, but it it keeps growing. So is God keep creating? You know, is that like? Now me, I'm not religious, so my question is, yeah, like that's the same question everyone has. Like, where is it coming from? Like, why is it expanding? Mhm. Mm and you know, it's really funny. Um, in the Bible, of course, like it could, you know, it could possibly um like mean that like there's our other universe. Like, there's other galaxies because, like, in the Bible, it said that the Earth was the most evil one or something like that for Jesus Christ to come down. Mm. So that means we're the only planet that's that cruel, that's know. that evil? I don't know. I mean, we have done screwed up stuff to each other. Very we screwed up. We kill each other over just skin, skin color. We kill each other over just drugs, like weed. We kill each other because... Someone may have better shoes than you, or we might kill somebody because uh, Anybody, we were talking to somebody's girl. Like you really can die for anything you want. Uh huh. Your your life really isn't that much guaranteed. Like kinda. It so, depends where you live, who you're around, but for the most part, humanity is evil. You know, so I mean, it's it's good. You know, to a certain extent, like. I mean, I can't say we're all, it's all evil because now we're sitting at this point making videos and no one has robbed me yet, but I'm just saying, you know. So basically, like, the Bible is saying that we are the most wicked planet. So that means, that should say something right there. Are we the most wicked planet? Maybe that could be not true. You Maybe. know, like, we could go to another planet. They could be, like, burning their own people for fuel. Who knows? <laughs> <No>. Uh-huh. <laughs> Who knows? But, but my key point is that even in the Bible, it says there's other galaxies. Yeah. But so. from here, now we learn that there's super clusters. So these <laughs> yeah. super clusters contain galaxies, which galaxies contain solar systems, which these solar systems contain stars and planets. And like I said, there's got to be, you can't even imagine how many planets there are. Because he said that there's too many galaxies there's trillions of galaxies, so you know there's got to be a number bigger than trillion of planets. You know, there's got to be a gargantuan of planets. It's got to be insane. Um, so that means there's there's definitely more life out there. The question is, are they friendly? Could they even understand our language? Like, what if they have different tongues? Like, what if they can't speak exactly like how a human body works? How will we communicate? Like, it's and even if they can create radio signals, what if our radio signals technology is different from theirs? What if there's no way to decrypt it? It's, we're really, it's very interesting because I feel like sometimes we should just leave it alone and worry about our planet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, we don't know what's out there. We really don't know what's out there. We really don't know what's out there. It's mm -hmm. scary. If it is assumed that cosmic inflation began at 10 to the negative 37th of a second after the Big Bang, and with the assumption that the size of the universe before inflation began was equal to its age times the speed of light, then this would seem to suggest that at the present day, the entire universe is 150 sextillion times larger than the observable universe. That number for reference looks like this, with this many zeros. Let this number sink in for just a moment. This would be similar to you thinking that the entire observable universe, everything that you could see, was the size of a light bulb, but then realizing that in reality the entire universe is larger than the former planet of Pluto. Imagine a light bulb in the center of Pluto, but we inside the light bulb were totally unaware that Pluto existed outside of it, and that's a similar situation to this. We are all so unbelievably small, but you shouldn't worry, because all that means is that there is so much left out there for us to discover together. Yeah. This video was made possible by Squarespace. If you're wanting to create a new website for your... Na My question is, are we the first civilization to actually make live long enough to make it to this point? That is a good observation. Like, maybe we could be the first planet in the universe that has actual life that's intelligent. 
Because there's dinosaurs before, but they weren't, like, super intelligent. They couldn't, like, make tools and, like, create gadgets and stuff. So, what if this, we are the first, like, species, you know, we're very, we pretty much all have the same brains in a way, and the same um, lung system, you know, same, you know, uh, body organs, stuff like that. We all pretty much work the same. We still bleed the same in a way. We just have different uh, genetic looks on the outside of our skin, right? Phenotypes. So, my question is, we are the first, like, intelligent species at this scale, maybe. We might be the only one. And then we might go to other planets and we might do what the Anunnaki did to us if they existed. We may end up getting to that point and then we go splice DNA on other planets with life, make them intelligent, and it just becomes a whole freaking universe of life now. And now we're going to have universe wars. Because you can't have war without humanity, right? No, I'm just kidding. Anyways, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, sorry we went too deep. And <laughs> peace.